When you work with bullions in Blender, you can't directly run subd modifier on that mesh because you're gonna get bad results. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to convert a bullion mesh into sub D mesh. It's really easy and quite fun. So let's get started. So let's look at a practical example on how we can convert Boolean Mesh into SubD. Now SubD is a bit more complex than just Boolean workflow in terms of topology because you have to really know how topology works to uh, create clean shading with SubD. And for this reason, I think you should go in and get our Jumpstart for Hard Surface course, which will teach you all the basics for Blender and they work for both Boolean workflow and subdivision workflow. And once you have this foundation, you can go a bit deeper and, you know, start studying uh, topology for sub D, which is a bit more complex and requires a lot of uh, patience and actually knowledge on the shading and how it all works. Okay. So to familiarize yourself with Blender in a fun way, go grab our Jumpstart course. It's really easy and it's free and it will give you a fantastic start in terms of hard surface. Yeah. yeah the link is in the video description. Uh, we're gonna create a cube here um, then we're going to run a bevel on that and then we're going to round these bevels now when you do that make sure you create even number of segments so when you select every second edge here in the middle and dissolve it you can half the resolution of a bevel this is very important for creating game assets so when you're working for you know on game assets just make sure that your bevels are I have always even number of segments. It's so much easier to drop the resolution and mesh like that. So now here what we could do is uh, add some uh, proximity loops, but uh, you know, if I wanted to do it manually, I would need to go here and insert, it, uh, insert this, and then you just start adding some loops and create cuts with knife, too fucking annoying, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a bevel tool for it. So click, alt click here with um, mesh machine, which will select the entire loop. Now, if you don't have in the mesh machine, just go ahead and buy it. It's you know, like 40 bucks or something. And if you can't afford it, then just fucking work harder, okay? Uh, I'm so sick of people fucking worrying. I know I'm gonna get heat for this, and I don't give a shit, okay? If you can't afford something you need, work harder. Uh, but, you know, you can also symmetrize it in here with mesh, okay? Just use this symmetry, so... Don't fucking cry, okay, in the comments, because I fucking hate it. So press P here, um, Control B, and then press P. Uh, which will allow you to adjust the profile of a bevel scroll down to three segments and then press a to adjust the width of it and you can create proximity loops, uh, loops very easily click out click Control b done right and now when i'm going to stop divide it i have a you know i have a perfect mesh for it we, we do need to you know connect these inside whatever but we can do it later so now to make it more complicated we're gonna add a uh, boolean right so we're gonna slash this with a boolean here Press W for a, a wedge cut one more time and create some like that. And I'm gonna apply this, okay? So go here and apply it. In fact, I'm gonna mirror it first, all right? And then I'm gonna apply it. So I go here and control A, control A. And what I wanna do now is I want to actually bevel this edge here. So control R here and we'll bring a loop, shift click this one, right? And then Alt A and align it. And we're going to uh, we're going to run a loop here so we can actually bevel. We're gonna remove this edge for a second and select these two, control B. And we're going to kind of create a chamfer here just for fun. And all decks we're gonna side and we're gonna create uh, connect these two with a J. Remove these two edges because we don't need them, right? And we're gonna be quad. So, probably what we should do is uh, you know, split it in half and let's just add the edge in the middle. And control B to create some proximity loops here. And you know, Bob Jankel. Grab these and we're gonna move them here. So G, G and slide them. And there you go. And we're gonna create a loop in the bottom. Now, what we can do to create more loops, we can just simply use a knife tool or whatever, because just adding loops manually is a bit difficult since we cannot really run them across the whole mesh. So anyway, now what we need to do, right? We need to, you know, clean this up because if I subdivide this now, it's gonna be a bit of a uh, of a plump, yeah? So we need to fix it. So now here on the top, what we could do technically, we could actually remove this edge, to be honest. And uh, since we created a more complicated shape, we can inset it, right? So grab that and inset it, which will create a proximity loop around here. And it's gonna help. 
here too um, we we do need a proximity uh, we need proximity loops here we need a rather loop here on this side and this will actually go all the way up so let's just uh, hide this with h and then run a loop here like that and then unhide it alt h and uh you know combine these two here so j and this will actually create a triangle here so what we can do is run a knife cut here across okay like that and then combine these two in the quad right and i'll take to the other side so now when i'm going to you know sub d that is going to be a bit better now here we have a, a end gone here in the middle but it's okay i'm just going to insert it one more time it's a flat surface doesn't matter so what i'm going to subdivide it's going to be peachy yeah when you don't need to fight your geometry don't fight your geometry okay uh, because it's fucking pointless okay so here we need a harder edge you see it's kind of sloping down that's because um, the geometry is uh, topology is wrapping around here what we need to do is run it all the way to the top right, uh, right? and it's gonna bring it up yeah and here that's really easy since we are inside of the shape what you can do you can run a second insert here and this will basically solve the problem you don't have to have quads inside here it doesn't matter because it's a flat surface okay so don't even bother you could con connect these here um this is gonna flex this corner a little bit not much um an easy way to connect these is gonna be with star connect so uh, go to hard ups and operation star connect and you know boom pop cool you could subdivide this edge if you wanted to select these operation star connect all text done it's a shit topology and quad boy is gonna have a fucking fit but i don't give a shit because it's working like you know don't fight shit that you don't need to fix because all this in, you know theoretically and no, practically this this topology here is unnecessary this entire um you know um jungle here it's all bullshit i can put one face it's the same thing Sh same shading right except for this corner here so if i combine these right to flex this corner you see the rest doesn't fucking matter at all right because it's a flat surface and it's secured by two loops so this inner angle just doesn't have any um impact on shading whatsoever okay so now here uh we have this uh you see that um this bevel here just goes down and kind of creates this kind of a wedge here i don't want that so i, I want to loop here in the bottom right so I can't run the loop here because we had an end gone uh, in this area. So I could create a quad here like this. But if I do that, um, I'm going to um, create a true, uh, I think two triangles in here. So let's see that. Let's fix our oh, one triangle. Okay, so we're just gonna simply add a loop here um, or just run the loop like that. All right, and run it all the way here. And then simply dissolve this and, you know, it should be sorted, right? Boom. And then all we need to do is secure it from the bottom, you see, because it's still pulling down, right? So we need to wrap it around. So uh, we could just do the loop here and bring it up and it's sorted, right? And this can go around, but it doesn't have to. You can do this and you're going to be fine, okay? No one gives a shit. So, you know, um, shading holds and, and it holds very, very well, even though we have plenty of angles and the topology isn't perfect, but it doesn't blow the matter, okay? So... All that matters is that you have these secure loops around corners and all the curvature and, uh, you know, topology is clean here in these corners and the rest honestly doesn't fucking matter, okay? So, uh, you know, use your brains, okay? You don't have to have quads everywhere, it's just a waste of time. Same here in the bottom, just select that, insert it, done, okay? Now this isn't beautiful, yeah? So we could do is just move it to the right, so... Um, uh, I mean to the left so we could do is select these two select this one the shift right here and align it with uh, machine tools boom right and then in on this side doesn't really matter um, you, you don't want to move this loop here because this loop actually supports I think actually no this one supports the curvature so you could actually move this one if you want to uh, so we could move it but you know what it doesn't really matter if you really want it to be pedantic, you could create a better flow here, but honestly, it doesn't change anything, so I wouldn't waste my time on it um, at all. Now, if you want to make it even more complicated, we could just create like a, I don't know, cut here, for example. Let's uh, run the loop like that. I think it's uh, it has to be um, a vert that has uh, four edges coming um, into it. Uh, there you go. Um, so let's make it a bit, uh, actually bigger is fine. 
you don't need so many um, verts, okay? Eight is enough to create a perfect circle. And it's also gonna combine very well with our geometry. So, you know, you don't wanna overdo it if you don't have to, okay? This is a flat surface, so it's quite easier, but if you if it was a curved surface, you know, you probably wanna have more definition here, so just add another loop in the middle here, okay? So, uh, let's just start create a extrusion, maybe scale this, insert one more time, drop a, drop a loop here, come on. Drop, drop a loop here in the middle and, you know, control B that. And if you want to make it even sharp, you can drop a loop here on the top. Boom, right? Now let me give you one more tip. If you want to create um, smaller details, what you need to do, you need to apply um, subdivision, okay? So let's apply, um, let's say, one level of sub D and see how dense it is. It's not bad, but probably one more level will be better, right? And now you have a lot of topology and you can start, you know, creating some crazy details. So for instance, if I wanted to, you know, create a detail somewhere here um, in this area, like maybe like something like this, right? I can do that very easily by inserting this and then pressing, uh, that's actually a little bit too thin, uh, insert that, press E, cancel with the right mouse button, Alt S, and then I again, and uh, this should work. So let's just uh, turn the um, sub D, control two, and there you go, get a small detail. So when you wanna create small details, right? You do that. And then um, this one is actually a little bit rough around the edges. Hang on a second. Maybe control three is gonna be better. There you go. Need high resolution. So, you know, if you're gonna do something like this, uh, this is gonna be super dense. So you can't really make it into a game asset. But what you can do, you can bake it, right? So when you create smaller details, um, you know, you're gonna go one level deeper in subdivision. What you wanna do is you want to create a backup of the mesh, right, the base one, and uh, you wanna bake it on top of it, okay? So when you're gonna be creating smaller details, you wanna actually bake them on top of your mesh. So, you know, you're gonna have a reasonable, um, you know, resolution, right? So there you go guys, that's how easy it is to convert a boolean mesh into sub D. All you need to do is just follow the, the rules and doesn't really take that much time, especially if you're gonna be working with tools like Dice. Uh, so for instance, I'm gonna uh, show you here very quickly. If I have this kind of a situation, right, and I want to, uh, let's say I got, you know, I don't know, boolean here, whatever, right, like this, and it's, uh, it's applied and it's, you know, whatever, and I want to, um, you know, I would like to now, let me just sharpen this, there we go. I would like to now, you know, add quads to this uh, face for some reason, I can select this face and I can go to Q and go to dice, yeah, and then press X or V was it, I V. So let's align ourselves first to this face, okay? So Q and you go to align view, which is gonna align you to this face, then click Q, then go to dice, right? Then press V. And you can actually adjust these quads by size to your mesh and then click. And this is going to only quadrify your face, right? I mean, this uh, one face. So you can create it as dense as you want. And then you can use this topology to reconnect to other, you know, elements, right? So DICE is very, very useful for, um, for this. But, you know, you don't really need that much topology here. Um, that's actually too much, especially on flat faces, like I told you. All you need to do is basically, you know, grab a face and simply insert it. So if I'm going to expand it, press F, we're going to have some problems because it's pulling, right? But if I'm going to insert it again, right, it's going to be fine, especially when I'm going to secure these corners here, right? See what I mean? So make sure you're going to be working on stuff that actually matters and, you know, don't waste your time on stuff that literally will not change anything in terms of shading. Like if I'm going to connect all these edges and create quads in here, no one gives a shit because you can't see that. And actually what I'm doing is I'm adding topology, right? So unless you have a very specific, you know, requirement um, or you need a specific edge flow in this area, then you don't really have to worry about it. All right, guys, well, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.